All right. As of late last night, one of the most popular exchanges in cryptocurrency, Binance Exchange, an exchange that I know a lot of you use, was hacked for over 7,000 Bitcoins, totaling over $40 million in funds stolen. Today, I want to talk about exactly what happened and how this affects you as a possible user of Binance, what you can do right now to make sure your funds are protected. My name's Austin, and if you appreciate these daily updates, hit that like button and let's jump in. Binance, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges by daily trade volume, has experienced a major security breach as of yesterday. Per Binance, so according to Binance, hackers employed a variety of tactics, including phishing and viruses, to obtain a large number of 2FA codes, two-factor authentication codes, and API keys in addition to other information. 2FA codes, your two-factor authentication, your Google authentication app, or whatever you use, that's what I use when I log into Binance. That's what I know a lot of you use when you log into Binance, and a lot of those were compromised. According to the exchange, there was one affected transaction wherein hackers were able to withdraw 7,000 Bitcoins worth over $40,700,000 at press time. It's a lot of money. In a letter on Binance's website, so Binance directly addressed this to their credit within hours after it happened, CZ, the CEO, stated that the Bitcoins were withdrawn from Binance's own hot wallets, which luckily only contained 2% of the exchange's total Bitcoin holdings. Not a good day for Binance. Um, but how does this affect you? This sort of thing, it's not exclusive to any one particular exchange. Every single exchange, even Coinbase, even KuCoin, even top exchanges that we presume to be secure, all could be affected by hackers. So what's the solution here? The big solution here, how you can protect your Bitcoin today, is don't treat exchanges like banks. You're your own bank with Bitcoin. It's the beauty of Bitcoin. You're your own bank. We don't have to trust these guys. That's Bitcoin, baby. Invest in a Trezor. Invest in a Ledger Nano S. There's a link down below to the wallet I use. Don't have to use that one. Use any wallet you want. Just keep it off the exchanges. Obviously, we're still going to use Binance to trade or another exchange. But if you have a two-factor authentication code, an API key, change out the key, reset your two-factor, your Google authentication app, reset it just to make sure that you're secure. Because in another quote from Binance, CZ, the CEO, also says, please also understand that the hackers may still control certain users' accounts and may still use those to influence prices in the meantime. So at the moment, all withdrawals and all deposits have been frozen at the moment. In the meantime, while they audit their system, this audit could take as little as a week possibly a few weeks where you're not able to withdraw or deposit your funds. The reason that they're freezing everything is because their exchange could still be vulnerable to those hackers. The hackers might not be out of their system yet. We will monitor the situation closely, but we believe with, with withdrawals disabled, there isn't much incentive for hackers to influence the market. What do you think? Let's continue this conversation down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. But third-party organizations like token analysts, they're already on it. We took a quick look at Binance Hack and have identified the hacker-owned wallets in the green that are holding 5,800, about 34 million, of the 7,000 Bitcoins. So almost 6,000 of the 7,000 Bitcoins have already been identified in certain wallets that were stolen. And since they were stolen, the BTC has not moved since the hack. So luckily in this transparent world of blockchain, we can see so far where the majority of the funds are, where exactly that money went. And in a story of unity in the crypto space, many other exchanges have come to Binance's aid or just said that they'd support, they'd support Binance and not honor any transactions from these wallets. So if these people that own these wallets try and liquidate on Coinbase or other exchanges, they will not be able to. So Coinbase showing their unity. Also, Justin Sun tweeting late last night, showing his unity, his support in the most Justin Sun way that he can. To support Binance, I will personally deposit 7,000 Bitcoin worth of USDT, Tether, into Binance to buy BNB, BTC, TRX, and BitTorrent token if CZ agrees. No need for the FUD, funds are safe foo. It's nice of him, but what Justin is really saying is, hey, I'll donate 40 million of some unaudited scammy tether 
I'll donate that and I'll put it into projects that I'm directly involved in, like TRX and BTT, to bail you out. It's nice of him, but I mean, he would love if he put more money into TRX. That would only benefit him. Either way, CZ says, no, we don't need it. Binance will use its secure asset fund for users. So they have a Seifu account, their secure asset fund for users to cover the incident. The exchange created the fund, okay, so I guess almost a year ago in July of 2018 as a type of emergency insurance. Binance allocates 10% of its total trading trading fees of every transaction to a to an emergency insurance account. So anybody whose funds got stolen will directly get paid back. What do you think? Let's see how the market responded. Let's refresh this right here. And good news, market really not affected at all. Bitcoin really hasn't moved. Still at 5,900. These altcoins really haven't moved. And even Binance coin down only about 5%. Just the fact that we had this bad news and the price of Bitcoin really wasn't affected at all might be an indicator that we are out of that bear market. Either way, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We drop a video every single day. You do not want to miss one of our daily updates. But that being said, before we get to Ethereum staking and how profitable Ethereum staking could potentially be, before we get to that, one more thing. CZ in his live stream Twitter AMA that he did last night he was toying with the idea that, hey, maybe we'll just roll back the Bitcoin chain so everybody can get their money back, which would not only be outrageous, horrible for Bitcoin, but according to this, not even possible. CZ later tweeted, after speaking with various parties, including Jeremy Rubin, Jihan Wu, and others, we have decided not to pursue the reorg. They're not gonna do the rollback. And it's not only because that would be horrible for Bitcoin, that would be bad for Bitcoin, not only because of that, not, not because they don't want to, but also because you didn't decide not to, you realized that you couldn't. CZ responded, that's true too. That's what Jihan advised slash educated me on too. I trust his advice. So for everybody saying that a possible rollback for the Bitcoin chain might be on the way, not happening, not possible. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Three more pieces of news involving Litecoin, TRX, and Ethereum staking, let's get into it. Staking, Ethereum's mining alternative, they're switching to proof of stake, will be profitable, but barely. If you're interested in staking your Ethereum to earn some passive income, let's go over the dirty little numbers. The takeaway, Ethereum is soon to abandon its Bitcoin style proof of work mining in favor of a long in development alternative system called proof of stake. This is to make Ethereum more efficient, use less energy, and under the proposal by the creator Vitalik Buterin, computer operations who validate transactions would be able to earn 5% annual on a minimum of 32 Ethereum investment or roughly $260 at a present price. So this right here, this sounds worth it if you're earning 5% annually just by holding, staking your Ethereum. But somebody did the math and you're actually going to earn less than you think. It's going to be less profitable than you think. Computer operators helping to validate transactions in a forthcoming version of Ethereum dubbed Ethereum 2.0, so this is being called Ethereum 2.0, will see positive returns on their investment, but not much according to new data. Here's that data. However, factor in hardware, electricity, and other additional overhead costs of running a validator on Ethereum 2.0, and then the annual profit margin drops to only roughly $41 or a net yield of 0.8, not even 1%, not even 1%. So what was 260 drops down to $41 in annual earnings. You're still earning passive income by staking your Ethereum. And if Ethereum rises in price and really rallies in the next two years, which I could definitely see, it's gonna be more than $41. But let's just keep it realistic. It's still gonna cost you a little bit to stake and the returns are gonna be a little less than you think. If anybody plans on staking, let me know. Comment down below. Let's talk about it. Next piece of news, Litecoin re reduces its transaction fees by 10%. If you like Litecoin, you'll like this. On May 7th, which is what, today? Yesterday, a blog post on the Litecoin.org project has announced the release of a new client software version, Lightning Core version 0.17.1. The update brings slight user interface changes. That's one a new wallet format, that's two, extended privacy features, and then 
a significant network fee policy change, which effectively reduces the minimum transaction cost from about 0.001 LTZ, LTC to 0.001 LTC. So if you lose, if you use Litecoin, if you transact Litecoin, then it's going to be even less fees. As we know, Litecoin was created to be the silver to Bitcoin's gold, and it's now even cheaper. Good day for Litecoin. Moving on, and this is a follow-up piece for something we dropped. How long ago was this announced? And I just wanna bring this up because sometimes when these things are announced, it takes months or weeks to come to fruition. This happened. This is good for Ethereum. So let's check this out. Microsoft releases their Ethereum app development kit for the Azure cloud. So this is, this is online, this is usable. Tech giant Microsoft has released a suite of tools allowing clients to build Ethereum-based apps on its cloud computing cloud on its cloud computing platform Azure. So some people say, hey, it's not really a big deal. They offer this to a lot of people. I say that this is a net positive for Ethereum holders and crypto in general because it just got a lot easier for tens of millions of developers and companies to now experiment with Ethereum. It's gotten easier to use Ethereum. It's right here. If you wanna use it for yourself, you can start building, check it out. But let's hear from a developer because he does use this kind of stuff. What does he think? I develop on Ethereum at my day job and I also use VS Code every day. What does he think? To me, this isn't anything amazing. I like the initiative here, but this is just a basic tool. One designed to bring users towards Azure. So Microsoft, make no mistake, Microsoft's not using this to help Ethereum. They want people that use Ethereum to come to Microsoft. Either way, good for, po for both parties. But either way, according to this developer, this tool will not really change anything for me. I see it getting a lot of attention here because Microsoft did it, but I hope you all don't get too hyped about it. I just want to offer my perspective as a daily developer. I appreciate that. So, I mean, it's no reason to sell the farm and buy Ethereum, but it's a slight positive news for ETH holders and crypto holders. Last piece of news, two more pieces of news. This is good for the decentralization of Bitcoin because it just came out every 30 days, new data comes out and Bitmain's hash rate has noticeably dropped in the past 30 days, which is, and that's not Bitcoin in general's hash rate, this is specifically Bitmain. Chinese cryptocurrency mining giant Bitmain's hash rate has noticeably dropped in the past 30 days, according to the company's hash rate disclosure updated on May 7th. And the hash rate has dropped by quite a lot. It's dropped from 1,600 quadrillion hashes per second in March to 230 trans, uh, quadrillion hashes per second in May. So 1,600 to 200. That's substantial. This marks a noticeable downturn in the company's Bitcoin mining power. So China is getting less of a hold on Bitcoin mining. As previously reported, the two mining pools operated by Bitmain, Antpool and BTC.com, contributed to almost 23% of the total hashing power of the entire Bitcoin network pool as of January of 2019. So at the beginning of this year, they only controlled 23%. Well, how's that different from six months before that? However, six months earlier than that, the company's mining pool represented 41% of the market share, meaning that its share has been steadily declining. Good news for the decentralization and diversity of Bitcoin mining. I like it. And last piece of news, and you know, I'm, I'm even going to skip this one because this is all just talk from Justin Sun. He's tweeting about how TRX will overtake Cardano in 30 days, which could very well be true. And he means just purely on market cap because Tron's market cap is 1.66. Cardano is 1.67. They're neck and neck, but either way, not really even news. Either way, I mean, it doesn't really matter if you take that long-term perspective. But that's the video for today. Let me know what you think. Like the video if you've gotten any value. Subscribe if you want those daily updates. My name's Austin, and I'll see you tomorrow.